From Day to DeRocher to Stengel, it's Double Play with DeRocher and Day. With their guest, Casey Stengel, here's another chapter of Double Play with DeRocher and Day. Welcome to another visit with baseball's most exciting and controversial couple, Lorraine Day and Leo DeRocher, with their guest for today, Casey Stengel. Fans, we have a very touchy subject to settle here today. The rumor that Leo talks too much, made by some irresponsible people, whom we suspect to be Dodger fans, has reached Leo's sensitive ears. This hurts Leo's feelings. Now he wants to bring this issue out in the open with his guest for today, Casey Stengel. Another quiet, soft-spoken, well-mannered baseball figure. Casey, do I talk too much? Well, Leo, to tell you the truth, you talk too much and you have the loudest voice of anybody that I ever heard that was managing on a ball field. Well, maybe Leo shouldn't have mentioned the subject at all. But here's a subject well worth mentioning. And now back to Double Play with Leo DeRocher and Lorraine Day and their guest for today, Casey Stengel. Let me ask you a question, Casey. You've won three American League pennants. You've won three world championships. How about me next year? You're going to give me a chance? Well, to tell you the truth, Leo, I uh, should say that we'll give you a great chance. It's a big city, you know. You must have a chance when your club can win two games in a world championship. In other words, uh, that's outstanding because what other club in the other two World Series win two games? Why, Casey Stengel, how could you say a thing like that? What other clubs? Oh, I won two games, you figure I'm lucky. (laughs) Well, no, I said that maybe the dark, you know, how the days were there in the fall and uh, then we had a rainy day. Maybe the rainy day helped me, I don't know. You were lucky with that rainy day. Well, maybe so. Uh, Maybe Leo knows something about it. Let me tell you something. I got one thing on my mind. I've had it ever since the series. I'd like to see Mantle in right field instead of Bauer. That's all I know. How do you know what I'd do if I had uh, Mantle still out there? You know, Mantle broke records too for distance, and Bauer only hit his ball 410 feet, you know, that day. But Mantle hit some 460. Maybe he'd hit one 460. You can't tell. Maybe he'd have hit a grand slam home run against us in that... uh ball hit by Evars wouldn't have meant a thing even if it hadn't been coming. What do you mean? Are you on Stengel's side? You're on my side. Well, I'm on the sofa with Stengel, okay? <laughs> You're on the sofa. Let, let, let me ask you, you one I need a little help that, here, I'll tell you. That Rizzuto with shortstop, of course, he covered the infield like a tent. Of course, you get along without him, too. You didn't need him. Well, I'll tell you, Leo, you know how you used to play shortstop. You used to go and catch the ball and throw the ball. And, you know, that's the way Rizzuto is. And after... That little man that you have playing second base. What are you talking about, Stanky? That's all. Well, that's a boy. He just tagged the man, I mean, just gently, and he happened to slide in and the ball was there. It was an accident, Casey. Well, to tell you the truth, I thought he broke his rip and then it flew back in place, and that's why the rain helped us on Sunday. Now, you say it didn't help us. That's why it helped the young boy to come back and be a great coach. And how about that fellow you had pitching for you, that left-hander who throws up that soft curve and the screwball, and once in a while, accidentally, he may let you hit a fast one. Leo, didn't somebody say that you could put all pitchers against him and win? Well, I just made the remark I'd rather put nine pitchers in. I think we'd have a better. Lopat, that's his name, Lopat. Two five hitters, beat us both games. Well, I'll tell you about Lopat. He's such a small boy. He started, you know, as a first baseman, and he found out that easiest thing to do is to go in there and pitch and use four curves. He's got one that way, one this way, and then he gives you that, and then, and then he stands and makes you guess who you're coming. He says, oh, you're a New York Giant, you're a New York Giant. And that's what I say, he wasn't used to his rhythm. Leo. Rhythm, I don't know. He had my club crazy. Everybody trying to pull him and hit a home run, and they were bouncing him back to him and a shortstop and a third baseman. Out, out. He's a great guy. Why don't you keep him on first base? Well, I'll tell you, you could have kept Coslow out of there for a long time, too, Leo. Well, he's pretty pretty good, I'll say that. But uh, I think the best team won in the World Series, Casey. You had a great ball club, and you played great, and we did the best we could. just wasn't good enough, that's all. All right, now that you're through handing out the bouquets and you have collected them, would you answer a a question that I want to know about? Because I was in New York. The team was on the road, and actually I wasn't helping Leo manage that day. He was on his own. But anyway, I was watching a game, and it was raining, and you were playing the White Sox. And if there wasn't the biggest rhubarb, because um, it seems to me that 
You, Mr. Casey Stengel, were stalling. <laughs> At least that's what it said in the paper. Now, I want to know all about this. Well, you have uh, a little argument there. Mr. Richards was playing very uh, good uh, with his ball club as he was the outstanding manager the first two months of the season with the White Sox. And uh, naturally, when you have a club playing good, you have everybody pulling for that ball club. So they came into the Yankee Stadium after a successful trip east, and unfortunately the weather got cloudy, and uh, the rain started down, and uh, they started to make a few runs. They were ahead at this time, weren't they? (laughs) Oh, yes, they got ahead often there, and uh, it looked like they might win the game, but I'll tell you, because of my age... I had to go out and take the pitcher out. You know how old I am. I'm how around 60. How long it takes you to get to that mound? And when it's rainy weather, I get sort of rheumatism, man. I just go... Even longer. That's it. Slowly out to the mound. And I made four or five switches of a pitcher. And, of course, Mr. Richard switched four or five hitters. And then I would have to say that the man above had the rain come. And, of course, I wanted to finish the game. You know how I'd be, Oh, yes, you could hardly wait. We had to sit in the clubhouse and take the game. So, that's my story. Double play takes time out now for this message. And now, back to double play with DeRocher and Day. Don't you think, honestly, and uh, aside of all this, that maybe the rules should be changed? I read so much about that, that they should not allow a game to be called and uh, have to forfeit the game because of rain, that it should be postponed to the next day or the next time the clubs meet. What do you two managers think about that? Would you well, like to... Uh, I know, to, to answer uh, Casey, I know that uh, in 1941, when we won the uh, pennant, and I was managing the Brooklyn Baseball Club, we were playing in Cincinnati, and uh, Larry Getz was behind the plate, and the score was uh, uh, nothing to nothing in the 16th inning. And uh, we scored five runs in our half of the 16th inning, and it was pitch dark. And in those days, they weren't allowed to turn the lights on. And McKechnie started to stall. And I know that in the last half of the 16th inning, I couldn't see my outfielders. And I put Hugh Casey in the pitch to finish up the 16th inning, and he walked three men in a row. And I went all jittery and jumping and nervous, and I run out there, and I said, Come on, Huey, take your time. Get the ball over there. And Larry Getz said to me, We're going to finish this game if we have to put lights on our caps. He said, they stall and we're going to finish it if we play it till midnight. And we did finish it and we beat them five to one. Well, all right. Now, that rule has been changed. Now they can turn on now the lights. Now they can turn the lights on. can't call a game because of darkness. That's right. Well, don't you think that the same rule should apply to rain? Well, it, it could, but that's an act of God uh, when you have a rain come down like that. And it's uh, it's something that the ball clubs or ball players have nothing to yes, do with. darkness is an act of God, too. I mean, but still you postpone the game and play it off another time? No, you so turn the lights on now. We change the rule. That's right. Well, so why can't you change the rule here? Why suddenly does the Well, I don't think they will work? because then you take all the fun out of the game. I remember a few years ago, Frankie Frisch, when he was managing the Pittsburgh club, uh, he built a fire on the bench because it got so dark. He built a bonfire, naturally. They threw him right out of the ballpark. Another time during a rain, like Casey had against Richards at the stadium, uh, he took his shoes and stockings off and rolled up, rolled up his pants and... Borrowed an umbrella and went off the coach with an umbrella and naturally got thrown out of the park. Haven't you ever been thrown out for any of those hijinks? I hear that you're quite a uh, character on the ball diamond with those things. Well, I had to change my ways. Uh, it seemed that I was catching up with the umpires before they could catch up with me. And finally, the <laughs> umpires went past me so many times that uh, with me out being on the ball field that... Uh, Really and truly, I used to be the best spectator on my club, and I was managing it. I never got to sit on the bench often. I generally sit in the grandstand. <laughs> and they decided that they'd prefer me to run the club from the bench, so I'm a changed man. Now uh, you have dignity. I'll yes. tell you another Don't thing, work. Casey. Uh, you must have had a really good uh, uh, scouting report on my ball club in the World Series because well, I don't know how that, you uh, pitched so well against us. What about that Dodger report? I've asked you a million times... How come if that Dodger report on the Yankees was so good, how come we didn't beat them? Very good. Thank you very much. Just a minute. There was nothing wrong with the report. Andy High gave us a great report. It was thorough, and and we read it and frontwards and backwards. Well, we believed it, but we just couldn't get the ball in the right place. And after all, uh, as Casey tells you, you know, he has it on his necktie here, Yankees, and uh, was one of those things. And maybe we got the ball low, and it should have been high. 
But I don't know what it was. They just defeated us. But we did have a good report on it. And I know Casey, he must have had a better one on our club. Tell me, Casey, did your scouts scout our club or did they scout the Dodgers? Well, to be honest with you, Lorraine, we scouted the Dodgers. Because they had such a good lead, we didn't uh, look for the New York Giants to win the pennant. I know I saw in the program, um, you know, in the World Series program, it said, uh, Yogi Berra, this is his third time playing against the Dodgers in a World Series, and here we were in it. Did I hear you right? You scouted the Dodgers and not the Giants? That's true. Well, what did you do? What happened? I mean, you didn't think we had a chance? Well, of course, the last week then we started following your club, Leo. Naturally, we figured that you'd gone a long ways for two months and a quarter, and we thought you were going to blow the kite, but you didn't, and... Uh, <laughs> After you made your uh, last appearance and win, then we really got serious. We had to play wait three days in the playoff and then get down to business. Well, now, let me tell you something, Kate. We snuck in there a little bit, didn't we? We sort of fooled you, huh? Uh, hey, fellas. Well, well yeah. yeah. I know. It's one of those things, yeah. Case, but... Leo, yeah. it's time... Just because yeah. Magley didn't win... Well, now... You didn't think that he... You, you fellas, think listen. A good How about Reynolds? Oh, what Reynolds... I'll never be able to break this up. This is the way they keep yeah, him training for those umpires. Anyway, it, it's time for us to say goodbye now. And don't forget to uh, continue writing to me. Tell me about the questions you'd like me to ask. That is, if anyone on this hot stove league session will listen for a couple of minutes. So long. See you next week. Same time, same station. Listening to another chapter of Double Play with baseball's most exciting couple, Lorraine Day and Leo DeRocher. Today, Lorraine and Leo had as their guest Casey Stengel. Join us when again it's time for Double Play with Leo DeRocher and Lorraine Day, plus another big time guest star. Double Play is produced by Marty Martin, directed by Ted Neeland, and is a Martin production. <laughs>